before that, um, who here's in the who here knows what does um, non-moving mean? Try wala pa no. Baka yung mga expert lang. So good thing I made it as simple as possible so that you guys can at least understand what it means now. Um, so basically, I'm Stanley Serretio. Yeah, call me Stanley. I'm the CEO, President of Five Cent Global uh, Corporation. We're just a small family business. Um, it's just me, my dad, and my mom, basically. But we have about, about combined 50 years experience on non-woven industry because we are manufacturers of non-woven here in the Philippines. So um, it's good for, the, for us to be able to share to you what it means, what it is. Then from there, you'll be able to at least have more things to look at how it works. Okay, so what is non-oven? Oh, this one's... Next na lang. Okay, so what are non-ovens? Um, basically, non-ovens are polymer made. So a while ago, it was discussed that uh, most of our fabrics are organic and non-synthetic. So this one is synthetic. It's polymer made. Um, it's made from um, polypropylene plastics. But don't be surprised because pag sinamit plastic, medyo spangit na lang pakinggan eh. But no, it's not something bad because these plastics are things that we can recycle. Same as what was discussed a while ago by Miss Anna from Bio. Um, they are randomly laid in an order and uh, made into a sheet. So what does it mean like? So it's not similar to our weave type, our knitted type. It's not the normal one that is do spinning, do the yarn, and from the spinning, then we'll be able to do the weaving part. When you look at how it looks like, woven part is like this. This is how it really looks like. You really weave it. The knitted part, you need it also. But when you look at one woven, this is how it looks like. It's randomized. So how does it work? When you randomized, they just stick to each other. So how does it work? It's usually randomized, but it's not uh, mechanically bonded physically. So it's bonded on the thermal basis. So you heat it up and you squeeze it and you'll be able to do the sheet. So um, its physical properties can easily be um, modified. So um, a while ago, uh, Ms. Carissa was saying that uh, our material or our edge is our uh, innovation. And being uh, something like a non woven the innovation here is to be able to really modify and have material manipulation on that specific physical properties. Most of the materials that we have, um, they have varying degrees of strength. They also have softness, absorbency, and filtering capabilities. So these are just very, very common type on, how, on its functionalities. But there's still more when you look at it. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so what are the characteristics? I won't go through the technical details. Um, technical details might be too boring for us, especially in Mejo, 12 o'clock na gutom na yung mga tao. But uh, I'll just share to you some very high level um, characteristics. Um, Agitex, that's our main, main trade, trademark. So um, when, when you ask Agitex, that's basically the movement from our company. Um, these are the main high level um, characteristics. Um, definitely do it, same as our cotton fibers. It's fiber size. It's mesh size, capillary density. Uh, capillary density is very important. Later I will share to you what's the reason for that one. Uh, mean fiber diameter and also their mean temperature stability. Since it's thermoform, you need to also know what is the stability temperature for this type of material. Some functionality, number one, thermobonded. So basically, you don't weave it, you do not need it. Uh, it's soft and comfortable because your properties, you can really modify it as per what is needed. Um, it has excellent bidirectional strength. So what does that mean? It means that you can either be water repellent, water absorbent, alcohol repellent, alcohol absorbent. You can even uh, introduce or put additional nanoparticles just to make sure that you'll be able to have uh, certain uh, characteristics for it. It has good strength and elevation. So it's not only used for fabrics, for textile, for garments, but also used for other industries as well. Uh, control permeability, same as a while ago, rejection of water. Air permeability, so this is one thing that we're looking into because what we're seeing is that most of our materials that we use, especially for PPEs, are very uncomfortable. Um, to share to you, my sister is a doctor, uh, she's a doctor in PGH, and we've been supporting her in providing PPEs. The one thing that they're always telling us about is that yung PPE nila, init. So probably init that they won't be able to do their work. So because of that one, we're trying to develop something with non oven so that it still be air permeable, but still be um, safe for you to use, especially in making sure that you're uh, filtering viruses. So that's how it is. And lastly, it's cost-effective and economical because it's uh, made from polymer and much faster for us to produce. Okay? No questions? See um, Okay, next slide, please. So there are two types of nanoven. Um, there's spun bun, spun lace, and there's also mat load. Uh, don't be too... Um, um, I don't want to picture. <laughs> so next slide. 
So anyway, so the story of Spanban is so basically don't be too uh, overly. Uh, it doesn't. It's not as complicated. Spanban basically the polymers that we have they make from resin. So you melt those uh, polymers, then you produce string like filaments. After you produce those string like filaments, you then squeeze it uh, on the thermal basis and make the sheet. So yun na kiniing tayo natin. Melt on the other hand is that you have polymer resin that you squeeze through naman a certain extruder, malit ang extruder yun. Then there is a small nozzle that has in, uh, uh, air blowing through it. So after the air blows through it, you will have a random type of filament. Then you squeeze it, then you become the actual uh, sheet. So to make it much simpler, so na 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 ni sir, ang spawn bag para spaghetti. So you just make a spaghetti, you put the resin, you squeeze out the spaghetti, then spaghetti, you flatten it and make it into a material. It forms a random fibers. Melt on the other hand is like cotton candy. So cotton candy, gumagawa ka ng cotton candy, rather than nakakainin mo na siya, flatten it. Once you flatten it, that's what melt-blown is. So each material, both spun-bun and melt-blown, have their own special characteristics. Spun-bun um, is much um, cheaper to do, easier for us to use, but the main difference between spun-bun and melt-blown is that melt-blown is really much used for filtering. So it helps us filter not only yung uh, viruses, also bacteria. That's why it's a very high material that's used for medical grade uh, PPEs. Okay? Okay, next. Okay, what's the common misconception for nanoven in the Philippines? Nanoven, when you look at it, kahit saan natin makita SM, any type of uh, mall, it's used for echo bugs. Yun talaga ang main na nakikita natin. Lahat ng echo bugs natin is the common misconception. Uh, I was also given a feedback before that uh, we were selling nanoven, sabi sabi, hindi ba yan lang yung mga echo bugs? Yes, it's for echo bugs, but when you think at, uh, look at it, echo bugs is just only one small portion of the whole functionality. Echo bugs is just only, when you look at the whole scheme of things, it's only maybe 5% of the whole functionality of nanoven. But definitely, since we're in, uh, in our industry, we see echo bugs as something that's helpful. It's the common misconception here in the Philippines. Echo bugs lang yan. Now, I will share to you three main topics or three main functionalities that I think is very much um, related to what's happening with us now, related with our government in our country. Number one is the use of medical application. So, kanina si Ms. Anna has already gave some um, tidbits on what non-moving is and how it helps um, bio with the PTEs. Construction is your textile. So, this one is because of their um, strength and the allocation of the material. And last is agriculture. Um, how we do, how we use this type of tela in agriculture as well. So, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it's not only garments. It, the garments is only one small part as well. But going to look into other industries, the software will be good for me. Okay, that was right. Okay, first one. Medical application. So, it's widely used in our PP application. A while ago, a uh, buyer really shared to us uh, uh, for uh, what's, how it's being used. Um, it's used for our medical grade PPE. The reason why it's used for medical grade PPE is because of the high hydrostatic head that uh, it has on the capillary density part. So basically, since it has high hydrostatic head, it can be used to really filter out virus. And this one is not only something that you just say that it's not being used because this one is already under international medical standard and also our WHO standard. So most of our medical grade PPEs are made of non-movement. It's made up of layers of non-movement to be able to meet certain requirements that we have. Um, medical community face masks. So we've been um, in partnership with um, uh, manufacturers for the viewer project. And one thing that we've seen is that every time we go here to PTRI and test our materials, 100% sure kami that the non oven that we use is the, is the one that we use for viewer for water event materials. So main reason for that one is that because of its um, um, properties, you'll be able to repel water. The good thing with it is that um, other than repelling water, we can alter its physical and chemical properties. Um, that's what we're say, working with Bio right now. We're trying to see on how to be able to add more additional uh, properties for the non oven so that it can also repel alcohol, also repel blood. Once you do it that you can repel alcohol and blood, we don't have to even import outside the ready for materials. We can already do everything locally. And that's our main goal. Okay, we're very much excited on that one. Then, um, it also has air permeability, same as what I shared a while ago. We want to make sure that our frontliners are very much comfortable in doing their work. We don't want to add more burden to them, rather than let them focus on helping us, rather than let them more, give them more burden to them. Lastly, is anti-static properties. Um, I was trying to ask, why do we need 
uh, antistatic properties for EPTs. Apparently, in surgery, the the one that you use for um, antiseptic is flammable. So that's why you need to, to be antistatic. If you have static, that would be the cost of static electricity that can lead to some um, flammability as well. So, um, these are just some pictures of our uh, actual clients who was able to do PPEs. Um, di na kami kumuha ng picture kay Bio, Miss Anna. <laughs> but um, basically, some of our clients who've been using it, um, they're very much happy with it. So, our next goal right now is that how are we going to bring up our standard to make it really man medical and WHO standard. Once we do it like that, will definitely be globally sustainable already. Okay? Okay, next. Geotextile reconstruction. So, how does it work? Um, I've worked, uh, I've talked to uh, Miss Mayriko downstairs, um, asked her about geotextile, how do it work? She gave me a sample. The sample that she gave to me is like a felt material. Yung felt material na yun, medyo makapal. And the reason for that was you need the tensile strength. Kaso, kung tingnan ko, ang mahal pala nun. Very expensive, it's not so cheap. Um, it's when I try to compare it to your textile uh, um, material naman ng nanuwin, the textiles na tila, we can, it's very much comparable, but the price is much lower. So how do, how do we use it for your textile? Three main um, possible uses. Number one is foundation stabilization. You want to definitely make sure that you'll be able to prevent soil erosion when you do construction. You want to make sure that you have a substrate, make sure na hindi siya talaga lao. So that's number one. Number two is um, building deck waterproofing. So uh, from the building deck waterproofing, for you to apply the waterproofing sa bubong, sa mga walls ng mga buildings, you need to have a substrate. If you do not have a substrate, sayang materials. Gamit ka ng gamit na materials, maubos lahat. So use that substrate as a media for you to be able to uh, contain the waterproofing material. And lastly is road construction. Um, for road construction wise, it's used to contain our cement and also our aggregates to be able to, cons to conserve our construction materials. So, rather than we use more materials in when nagalatag tayo ng asphalt, we can use the non moving first as a way for you to be able to contain it. Have same mix in your materials, then from there, do your actual build program. So, I was trying to see it's very much related to our whole government's uh, program, which is the build program. Um, here are just some pictures for actual um, activities. Some diagrams that we've been working on. This one is one for the fishery. Um, it helps for to make sure that the fishery to be, uh, for you to be able to do um, ag uh, containing of aggregates while doing on your uh, construction activities. And this one is just for uh, road um, activities. Okay. Okay. And last one. Okay. So last one is something that's very close to my father's heart. Basically, this one he has been doing this for I think. 20 years na yata. So para siyang, he's a non-woven manufacturer, but he's also a weekend farmer. Yung tawag sa mga niya. So anyway, um, non-woven fabrics is used to provide physical uh, protection and also for cultivation. So um, it's, uh, since it's air permeable, um, you have local protection for your crops from uh, insects, etc. But at the same time, it also has capillary properties, the one I shared a while ago. Since it has capillary properties, it can also be used as mulching. So mulching is when you put it to cover naman sa soil. Anong miso nun? If you do it as mulching, yung capillary density niya, it can contain water. So yung sabihin nun, yung soil mo, laging basa. Since laging basa yung soil mo, ang nangyayari sa kanya, it can simulate um, higher climate conditions, yung mga mas malalamin. It can simulate para sa bagyo pa, para sa bedded ka, etc. And it's very much proven. Um, we were able to do this one in our backyard lang. This one is in Las Piñas. So we have an organic lettuce farm in the middle of the city, Las Piñas. Sa likod lang kami na Robinsons. But basically what happens here, hindi naman po. But um, basically what happens here is that we were able to test the nano fabric and we were able to produce organic lettuce, no pesticides, and also make sure that we simulate the cool weather of Baguio and Benquet in the middle of the city and make sure that it's also growing as well. The good thing with it is that because we do this one, hindi na siya seasonal. That means you don't need to wait for a cold weather para siya mag-plant ng lettuce. Any day, any time pwede. So that's how it works right now. Um, it's a very much, um, a, well, it's a good uh, activity that we're doing. It's also very much uh, an alternate to our greenhouses and also the use of chemicals, which we also do not know. Okay. 
Okay, so um, I made it quick and short because I want it more of mas pa nung at least makihingi naman kayo na hindi lang eko bag ang ano, aking nanubin. So, make it very much quick and short. It's more more than just a common eco bag. When you look at nanubin, don't look at it as just a common eco bag. Look at it as something that's more to that. And definitely, it's really something more to that. The three main items that I shared are just very small items compared to the whole bigger picture. I haven't even shared about hygienic, filtration, haven't even shared about how you use the industry, and all other requirement industry. Okay, so um, other than that one, so I think um, there's a lot of uh, wide array to be able to support our uh, country's economy. Uh, we have the local expertise and capabilities. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, the, for our first few speakers have been talking about the manufacturing part. How we convert our tela into garments, tela into something that's useful. Now let's look at also the upstream part. How are we going to provide uh, materials naman on the raw materials? And this one is one thing. We do have that capability and expertise. And me, myself, I'm very much excited to partner with uh, PTRI to further develop the material for the nano industry, which is something that we want to do. Um, the river project that we had with DTI was a springboard that showed us na, ay, hindi lang pala eco bag ang, ano, ang mask natin. Ginagamit lang ito ang nano wind. Ginagamit din pala for mask, for PPE, and all other materials. The only challenge that we have right now is we need to continue this momentum. Let's make sure that we started it already, let's continue the momentum, and let's develop it so that we'll be able to have something sustainable for our country. Let's not make it something that we just import from outside. Let's do it something that we do it inside, end-to-end -end process. We are from the out upstream part, provide the raw material, then let's do the conversion and help our frontliners and help also our full industry. Okay, I think that's already my last slide. Oh, yun na nga. So, if you have any questions, nandiyan naman. I'm not sure if you're able to read, but if you have any questions, just contact me. Sabi nga ni Sir Jesus, sa Facebook lang naman ako. Madali naman ako mahal. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time again. So, thank you very much for the uh, engineer Stanley. So, yeah, Faisal Global is a partner, really. And not only of the of PTRI, but of the DTI and many other instrumentalities we've seen in the private sector 